Hi everyone, I'm Mark and I'm going to be talking about surveying honey buzzards, or perhaps I should say European honey buzzards, Ernest apivorus, as there are three other members of the genus in Asia. I really like the Dutch name actually, wasp thief, because as you know, these birds specialise in predating wasp nests. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see that this adult male has got wasp comb in its talons that it's presumably taking back to its nest. This talk mainly focuses on Sussex. There's a brief foray into Kent, but what I'm talking about will be relevant to any parts of Britain where honey buzzers occur or could occur. So just before we get into that, I'm gonna say something about species global and national conservation status very briefly. So starting globally, there's the breeding range right across Europe into Central Asia. It's an IUCN species of least concern considered to have a stable global population within this sort of range. And they winter in sub-Saharan Africa, and that's where the juveniles will spend the first 80 months of their lives before returning as young adults, not to breed initially, but to spend the summer on the breeding grounds. Is that population estimate accurate? Well, there's been recent counts from Batumi, the famous raptor watch point in Georgia, of over half a million adults in the autumn, and they're presumably coming from the eastern part of the range. So that global population of the IUCN looks like it's considerably too low. But it's nice to start off this talk with some good news. Turning to Europe, and I'm taking this from the second European breeding bird atlas, the situation is uncertain. There's evidence of some declines, but also potentially some increases elsewhere in Europe. And then looking at the position in Britain, the uh, paper in British Birds 2022 by Rob Clements and others covers the National Survey and estimates 150 territories in Britain. Clearly that's very small in relation to the global population. It's an amber listed species under the Birds of Conservation Concern 5. I think it's always been amber listed in those reports. And then applying the IUCN criteria to Britain, it's considered endangered due to the small range and population. That's perhaps surprising, although you could imagine large scale conifer plantation felling, perhaps as a result of invertebrate pest infestation could lead to a local reduction in available breeding habitat. So turning to Sussex now, this is the area of work that I'm involved in, breeding season surveys. Uh, there's an important long-running program of ringing and nest studies in Sussex and elsewhere that Steve Roberts leads. I'm not going to be talking about that because that's his field and not mine, although I do help him from time to time. Very enjoyable it is too. I'd like to be able to talk to you about migration in Sussex, but we really haven't got a Falsterbo despite the best efforts of Beachy Head on a good autumn day. So uh, yeah, it's breeding season surveys that I'm involved in. And I'm not going to talk to you about detecting honey buzzards because that's really well covered in the literature. And that book on the left hand side of your screen uh, really tells you everything you need to know. But I will give you a few tips. One is to find out what the likely habitats are in the area you're searching, because the preferred habitat of breeding honey buzzards is not uniform across Britain. Secondly, and really important, don't be put off by an absence of records. I found many honey buzzards in Sussex in places where they've never been recorded before, and clearly there are a lot of bird watchers in Sussex. And thirdly, taking photographs of different birds helps you de determine how many are present. This is a technique used with great effect by the Central Scotland Honey Buzzard Group. Uh, so you're looking for a viewpoint on a nice day uh, between the middle of May and the end of, end of August or early September for adults and you need to be really optimistic. Endless optimism and endless patience. These are quite secretive birds very often, you know, they stay under the canopy for hours on end, very unlike common buzzards, so be patient. So here's a map of Sussex and uh, I'm adding there a shape which covers the areas of the high weald and low weald and parts of the west and south downs which contain suitable breeding habitat. Clearly the river valleys themselves don't have suitable breeding habitat. You can imagine if you're finding you need to find viewpoints 
um, across that whole area. And each viewpoint gives you a, a, a radius of about two square miles, sorry, two, two miles distance in each direction to watch. And then you need an awful lot of viewpoints. And it gives you some idea about how difficult it is to obtain full county coverage in a, in a county like ours. We're lucky, of course, to have such a, a wooded county to, to, to be studying. I just wanted to say a little bit about the breeding season status categories that we use in Sussex, because we don't use the, conf the confirmed probable possible breeding status categories, which we find rather misleading. So these are the categories we use. And uh, the reason we don't use the uh, possible breeding category in particular is that this includes a single adult in breeding habitat in the breeding season. And we know from repeated observations at sites that these birds uh, are definitely not breeding. And if we included them, so for 2022, for example, we get, we get an extra 25 possible breeding pairs, which will give us a total of up to 55 breeding pairs, which is the same as for the whole of England in 2020. So you can see that it would be rather misleading. I've got um, the criteria that we use against each of those categories if anybody wants to see it, but I haven't included, included it here. It would make for a rather crowded slide. So in Sussex, the preferred breeding habitat is mixed broadleaf and coniferous woodland. I'll say something about uh, status in a moment. This slide I chose, this photo I chose deliberately, there's honey, a honey buzzard summered here in 1931, and they weren't seen again here until 2019, uh, 2019. And then last year, we found uh, juveniles here. So I can't stress too much the need to search places which have few or no previous records. So previous, uh, the early, earliest breeding in Sussex, 1976, although it could well have occurred earlier, possibly much earlier than that. For example, they, they were breeding in the New Forest in the 19th century, although heavily persecuted, very sadly, and from the 1940s. So it seems a little bit implausible that they weren't present in, in Sussex in some of that time anyway. So the survey work in Sussex um, was done initially in the 90s and 2000s by a small group that did brilliant work. They found many nests, bringing many young. And from about 2007, I got involved with them and I was then trying to improve coverage in the county. And that's something that I've continued to try to do. So how do you go about doing that? The first thing is you have to make a trade off between secrecy and effort. And for very good reasons, honey, honey buzzers have been subject to a lot of secrecy in the past and still are. But if you want to to get full coverage of a large county like Sussex, you have to involve quite a lot of people. It's a tricky decision, and I certainly respect people who decide to, to maintain the secrecy. However, in Sussex, we have involved a larger team, certainly for the survey, and uh, there were no adverse consequences of doing that. It was only beneficial in that we found more pairs than we would have done otherwise. We tried to get full county coverage, uh, including, as I say, going to places where they've never been seen. And that was to some extent effective, although we certainly weren't able to cover the entire county. So what were the results of the work? Well, in the, in the national survey, Sussex was found to have about 18% of the national population and 28% of the English population. And I'm going to show you a slightly busy slide here, I'm afraid. But if you can follow me, uh, it, it's worth it, I think. So breeding pairs, that's the bottom green line um, starting from 2000. But if you focus on 2009, 2010, we had seven pairs in each of those years. And again, seven pairs in 2020 and 2021. And then in 2022, we had a record year with 10 breeding pairs. Um, that dip in 2012, by the way, was a very wet year when only one pair bred. And then looking at the number of breeding pairs, including non-breeding pairs, that's the red line. You can see it shows a similar increase since 2012, in fact, slightly steeper, and we had 15 pairs altogether last year. Then the brown line, that's all adults, and that's shown a pretty spectacular increase going up last year to at least 55 adults present. And in fact, the estimate was 55 to 65 adults. 
Now, surely this must be a genuine increase. Well, I'm not so sure. I think it could just be increased effort uh, and, and using photographs to identify individual birds. But uh, maybe it is an increase, and I will come back to that just in a moment. I also wanted to say on this slide that it shows goshawk territories because goshawks kill adult and young honey buzzards. And it might have been the case that the tremendous increase in goshawks that we've seen in recent years in Sussex um, was correlated with a decline in honey buzzards. And as you can see, happily, that's not the case. So coming on to the question of whether there is a genuine increase taking place, just one thought I wanted to drop in. Um, the area in Kent between the North Foreland and Dungeness is amazing for seeing honey buzzards coming in off the sea, including right in the middle of the breeding season, which I've taken as being between the 10th of June and the 20th of July. That picture top left there is a female coming in off the sea near the South Foreland on the 28th of June last year. And the Kent Ornithological Society have very kindly given me data from which I produced this graph that just does show that there appears to be a genuine increase taking place, bearing in mind that these sites like um, Sandwich Bay, South Fall and Dungeness are pretty well and consistently watched and have been for many years. So it may be that we've got these non-breeding adults coming in from the continent during the breeding season, maybe some of them are coming to Sussex and maybe some of them are returning in future years, or will return in future years to breed. So I think that's an interesting topic that could be worth further study. So what are our plans for this year and next year? Well, we're going to have a big team this year, going to be split up into different groups covering different parts of the county. We hope to cover the entire county. That may still not be possible. How many birds will we find? I think 20 pairs is the upper limit. Be very excited if we found that many. We may find many less. Anyway, fingers crossed. And changing the subject slightly, we are going to publicise a few sites from 2024. And um, this is obviously tricky and controversial. There are risks attached. These are some of them. The ones I pick out in particular are actually the middle two. So badly behaved bird watchers alienating landowners. We know that this happens and it could happen. And we need to choose the viewpoints very carefully to minimise the risks and take other measures to minimise those risks. But the advantages are definitely there as well. The second one there, better, better data on status. From the point of view of this talk, that's perhaps the most important. But getting more people enjoying honey buzzers, you know, gets more people interested in our wildlife, interested in the environment, interested in conservation. And there may also be a potential win in terms of our relationships with, with landowners. So we need to be careful, but that is something we're going to do. And I have spoken to the people who operate the RAP to the honey buzzer watch points at Wycombe Forest and in Nottinghamshire as well. And uh, I've also spoken to Mark Thomas of the uh, RSBB's Crime Monitoring Unit and to Mark Eaton. And uh, we think that this is the right way to go. I've consulted Hampshire and Kent Ornithological Societies. We've consulted our membership and we're not getting pushback yet from anybody. Interesting. And I'm not going to talk about ringing, tagging and nest studies, as I said, but I just wanted to say this is such an important way of getting information that field survey work can't get, particularly in relation to what's going on at the nest and breeding success and diet and, and feeding behaviour. Um, and many young honey buzzers have been ringed in Sussex by Steve Roberts and, it, and his team, uh, one or two by me. Uh, it's great fun and very safe, by the way, the research shows this is very, very safe. And one of the things that has been found uh, is that birds move within Britain, within England at least, and between, between countries to breed. That, that really was quite exciting. So there was a, a male that was found breeding in the Netherlands uh, in 2021 and had been ringed in Sussex in 2013. There it is, the lovely pale male. And we knew it had come from Sussex because of the ring on his leg that the photographer Edward Decker very, very professionally photographed. So there we are with apologies to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the Dolphins, so long and thanks for all the wasp grubs. There's a juvenile honey buzzard on its way to Africa over the Straits of Gibraltar and you can see that it's uh, 
wing shape is rather like a common buzzard, so it's uh, often considered the most misidentified raptor in Europe. So thanks to uh, many people who've helped me, and here are further sources of information if you want them. Do please contact me if you want some help with your field work. And big thanks to Steve Roberts in particular, and to Rob Clements, Mike scott Ham, Dave Burgess, and other people who've helped with the honey buzzard survey work in Sussex. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.